as we turn to our Lord in the prayer of confession. Lord Shepherding God, you have called to us, but we have not answered. You have sought us out, but we have continued to wander. And you have tenderly gathered us together and cared for us, but we have not extended the same care and mercy to others. Forgive us. Remind us. Teach us. Set us free from sin that we might turn towards your love and justice for the whole world. Guide us so that tentative step after tentative step, we may walk with your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear these words of assurance. God says to us today, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And I will make them to lie down, and I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strength. And I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. And so, brothers and sisters, we gather today to witness to the fullness of God's grace in His Son, Jesus Christ, for each and every one of us, in whose name we say, Amen. Thanks be to God. At this time, if you're visiting with us, this is the time when we have the privilege of just missing the children for Children's Church. And so they are going to go with Jeremy and Kendra. So this morning, uh, our, our big idea this morning is that Christ is in our midst. He's all around us. He's there each and every day as we enter into the world. And the question that I want us to consider today is, do we have eyes to see Jesus Christ? Do you have the eyes to see because the story that we're going to hear today that Jesus is going to share with us questions whether we have the eyes to see. And so I want to invite us, let's turn to God's Word, shall we? And we'll pick up in, in Matthew chapter 25, and we'll pick up with the 31st verse this morning. Now when the Son of Man comes into His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Now he will put the sheep on his right, and he will put the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did, 
for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. And I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. And they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Here ends this reading from the book that we love. Thanks be to God. So here's this challenge today. I don't know about you as you listen to these texts and, and these words that Jesus is sharing. I feel like I'm on trial. And I think about it, and, and I think about it, it's kind of like a police lineup, right? And I sit here and I go, which one are you? Which one am I? Am I the one on the left? Am I the one on the right? Because see, Jesus is judge. He's the defense and he's the prosecutor and he's the king on this Christ the King Sunday. And he presents this case of judgment before us. Now here's the thing. It's not a police lineup, it's goats, and it's sheep. And, and those sheep, by the way, are the ones that I saw when I was out in Colorado. So this may not be the sheep you're used to seeing around here, but these are big horn sheep. And, and the other thing about this is, is, is this reality that it's really this image that we're looking at, that he's talking about. I'll give you a little bit of context. Most of us don't realize it, but um, sheep and goats, they, they would herd them together. They would be together, but in the evening, they would actually bring them in and they would actually separate them. So when Jesus is saying sheep and goats and that they're going to be separated, those listening would have sat there and gone, oh, it makes perfect sense. I didn't know this, but... Um, Evidently, the sheep have a little bit more insulation and they're more adaptable to cold weather, but they separate them each night and they bring the goats in so they can have some protection from the cold. And in, in this picture, it's pretty obvious, right? They've got a nice thick wool coat and, and the goats are a little bit black. And so that's just a little con contest here. But, but then here's the other reality, right? Here's this. While well, he puts one on the left and the other on the right, both are ignorant and uninformed. I don't know about you, did you hear it? I think of this story and I immediately think that it's an individual case and one day I'm going to stand before God and he's even asked me personally if I did those things. And something I've never caught is that both the sheep and the goats both ask Jesus the same question. When did we see you? They're both blind. They both haven't seen Christ in their midst. And so it's this idea. Then the second thing is this. It's a communal question that's being posed. When did we see you? It's not when did I see you. It's when did we collectively see you, feed you, 
clothe you, welcome you in, give you shelter. When? It, it's a group effort. And so those two things kind of stand before me today as we're thinking about this. And then this question, why? <coughs> what is it about the sheep? And why are some the goats? And I think about it and I go, you know what? Why is it that he calls out the sheep? Is it because the goats didn't go to Sunday school? Didn't use the right pronouns? Didn't call God by his name? Didn't worship him? Didn't pray for him? Didn't go to Sunday school or, or Bible study or BBS? Or is it maybe because the goats didn't volunteer at Mount Trotter or Love Inc. or God's Closet or Habitat for Humanity? Why the goats? And then why the sheep? And then there's this reality that the goats are just as bad as the sheep, right? I think about it and I go, it's just true. Right? They're just as bad as the sheep. I think it's because of their bad jokes, right? You're supposed to laugh at that, right? It's a bad joke, right? Some of you, not others of you are just shaking your head. But I sit here and I go, why? I'm going to pull this back up. The beauty of technology. You see, they're both ignorant, and I just said it earlier. They both miss it. And maybe that's the point. Because I think in our culture today, what we want to do is we want to try to define who's in and who's not in, who gets divided and who doesn't get divided. That's really kind of how our world works today. And I think sometimes maybe that's the point. We live in a world where it's all about having purpose in your life. I think of all the books as I walked through the airport, it was about how to find purpose in your life. And all these self-help books and how if you just follow these ten things or these five things or do these things, your life will be absolutely wonderful. somebody food, 
when you offer somebody shelter, when you help somebody in need, it's your life that's changed completely. But so often we might do it out of a sense of obligation and responsibility. But when you go and serve, whether it be at a Maltrada kitchen or one of the shelters in, in Muskegon, and you go serve a meal, and you look into the face of those coming and receiving that food, it changes you. When you go and sit with a kid once a week for an hour at the school who's in need and spend time with them, if your kids help mentor, you're not just changing that child's life, but by the end of the year, that child has changed your life completely. And that, I think, is at the juts of this. Neither the sheep nor the goats understood and knew who Jesus was. They both asked the question, Lord, when did we? And yet the reality is, is that one, the sheep chose to be instruments of grace in their community and their lives as they lived out their lives. And that made all the difference. And the others, the goats, were condemned to eternal hell and damnation. And I don't know about you, but that's just the crap out of me. Because I wonder how many times have I missed the opportunity to be Christ, to reach out. And it was him standing at the door. too focused on my task at hand. Or whatever it was I was doing before I had already passed a judgment on them and walked right by them. You see, it isn't a question of do they need it? Or are they taking advantage? Or are they going to waste it or blow it? I think the question is did we respond? That's the question we've got to ask ourselves. Because here's the reality in this text and this story. Our salvation doesn't depend on that. Our salvation depends on Jesus Christ. But if we've accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, then I think the call on our hearts is that we will act, we will do because of the unbelievable gift of grace that he's given us in his son Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. And that's the challenge. And so I sit here and I think about it and, and I go, okay, I'm going to need some help because this is dead. <laughs> So there's this question that I see, the key point. When was the last time you put your own needs on hold to tend to the needs of a stranger? Notice I said stranger. Because I think Jesus is there and the stranger in our midst. It's easy to help out the person who looks like us, walks like us, talks like us, and lives like us. But the question the sheep and the goats both ask is, when did we see you? And Jesus says, I was the least among you, the stranger in your midst, the one who was in need. And so that to me is the question and the challenge today for us to ask. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. 
So thankful for the gift that you've given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, for your words that challenge us today to ask ourselves, when have we seen you? And when have we been your hands and feet, Lord, reaching out to help those that are the least among us, those that are in need, those that are hurting and broken. And God, we confess today before you that sometimes in the midst of the busyness of our lives, we just, we just keep walking. We're unable to see. Unlike the good Samaritan who helped the stranger on the side of the road. And so we ask God that you would forgive us in those moments when we do that. And that you would help us to see with your eyes each and every person as somebody created by you. Created not only by you, but beloved by you. And may we extend, especially in this coming season, may we extend the love that you gave us in a child and a manger to those around us, whether it be at work, whether it be in the store, whether it be the person we simply hold the door for or help out. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. At this time, if you're visiting with us, we have the privilege of coming before the Lord and we bring in our tithes and our offerings to God. And as I think about that, I think about it from the perspective of the abundance. And so as we bring our gifts, we bring them so that we as a church might reach out and serve and give and help those in need in our community and the world around us. The deacons may come forward to receive our